working solo today, but that doesn't mean I ever get to take a break from trying to continue to push education and content. So we are in the ever continuous quest of continuously upgrading, changing, and uh, updating environments. So today we are updating our Mexican Black King Snake Male O'Malley from a Exoterra, I think it's called XL or Large Low. It's the 36 by 12 by 18. Uh, and this is the XL tall or medium. I don't know the I don't know the different sizes. Basically, it's 36 by 18 by 18, so it's going to provide a little bit more area. So here is O'Malley that we've already uh, snagged from the other uh, from the other enclosure, and we're just going to get right into this. Normally, I already have it pretty much filled out, figured out, um, and then I just kind of talk a little bit as I do that. But today, I'm going to just go, not necessarily from the ground up, but I mean technically from the ground up, because we're going to start with substrate, and we'll just fill it out, and we'll just kind of have a little chat about it as we go along. So, getting started, so here's the 36 enclosure, which is, I think, a decent size for an adult colubrid. Uh, Mexican black king snakes don't get huge. Um, they typically are a little bit smaller than the Cali kings, um, and then uh, a lot of people will keep those in, like, a 36. I'm on the fence. I think there's nothing wrong with that, so, like... But I think maybe like a 120 gallon or like a four foot might be okay for a Cali King Snake or for some that gets a little bit larger. But whatever, that's it. That's whatever the case may be. We'll see. Always room for improvement and things like that. So when we think about the Mexican Black King Snakes, we're thinking about finding these guys in more arid regions of uh, Mexico and places like that. So when we do the soil substrate, we're going to do a mix of play sand, of organic topsoil of some leaf litter and a little bit of cypress mulch. So the cypress mulch and the topsoil will allow for a little bit of leaf litter, uh, or will allow for the ability to hold a little bit of moisture. And then the loose play sand makes it kind of loose, which will allow them to bury. Because if you have m many king snakes, but Mexican black king snakes in particular, if you do give them the ability to burrow, they will absolutely take advantage of it. Which I learned as through the previous two Mexican black king snake builds, uh, that whenever I put like the little divider and gave them more sandy substrate and more humidity, more traditional snake bedding substrate, uh, he would very quickly knock over, pull up, dig out that barrier, and would end up getting kind of crossed all over anyway. So we're just going to do this whole little thing. Then this was the previous enclosure for uh, our uh, northern pine snake. So that was, uh, she was uh, pretty destructive. She liked to rip this off. So... You know, we pulled everything out, washed it, changed up the substrate, and then we put this back in. Um, so, waste not, whatnot, it won't be the end of the world, and if O'Malley gets back behind there, cool, he can get away from this light. Um, and then the lighting above, it is actually one uh, low wattage UVB bulb, and then just a little halogen bulb for a little bit of extra light and just a tiny little bit of heat. Um, in the winter, I have a heat pad over on this side, so when we start filling this out, this is going to be the warm side, this will be the cool side. Um, during the summer, uh, I mean, we did just move down here, so I'm still figuring out the actual temps and everything, but it's set to the point where most of the colubrids are almost purely ambient, and we're just doing like the good, oh, it's probably about 10, 12 degree night drop um, without supplemental heat in this building. And so during the day, it gets up to like 70, in, almost to 82 over on this side. It's a little bit cooler on that side. Um, Although I added a humidifier and that's helping in here as well. So essentially this will just kind of be their basking area during the summer. And then obviously we'll add the supplemental heat for the winter. So let's get started with that then, shall we? So first things first, we have the substrate, have the lighting. Let's put a little water dish over here. I'm going to put this on the cool side over here. Very down just a little bit. And we'll see. I may end up moving it around as we build along. Haven't really, uh, haven't quite decided how I'm going to do this quite yet. Then we're going to do a couple different hides. So we're going to take this hide, this will be the cool hide, and we'll stick it back here. Now, as far as, like, uh, a lot of times I talk about adding moisture and humidity on the inside of these hides, um, for a species like the Mexican black king snakes, they don't necessarily need nearly as much humidity as a lot of other popular reptiles that are more subtropical, like ball pythons and boas and things like that. So generally what I will do is I will just, you know, reflay this and then maybe dump a little water over here, spray out under there. So 
under the individual hides a little bit wet, but I won't actually add sphagnum moss under those. Um, and then, so since this is going to be, I think what I'm going to do actually, is I'm going to take this larger hide right here, and I'm going to stick that one kind of like right there. And then I'm going to put this on top right there. So it'll be a, well, something a little bit on top there. Well, I might change it up for the winter because like this heat pad, this will help absorb that heat through the substrate and you can warm up on that. Haven't quite decided, maybe I'll put another rock inside of this hide because it's a pretty large hide. And that's actually probably what I'll do for winter. I'll just put another piece of flatter uh, slate or a flat piece of rock under here and put it directly on the glass and have the substrate kind of around that. So that way you can get a little bit of heat under that for the winter times. And then now we, we're gonna start filling out with some other fun stuff. So personally, I know that even though these guys are you know, fairly fossorial, not necessarily the, well, they're more terrestrial, not fossorial. They will bury and burrow and things like that, but they do spend a lot of time hunting in and around the ground and around rock canyons and crevices and shelves like that. But I know they will also climb low levels into small things. So we're gonna add some climbing branches. Um, one of my new favorites is choya wood. Well, they're not as plentiful in the areas where Mexican black king snakes are found, as far as I'm aware. Uh, I do like to use it because it kind of adds a nice little uh, deserty motif to that. So we're going to do this. We're going to prop that up just like so. Maybe not just like so. We'll do, we'll do that actually. That way I can get to that water dish a little bit easier. And so that'll be nice and propped up just like that. Um, we're going to take, ooh, let's see, maybe this kind of twisted branch like here. And we're going to do this, maybe? Let's see. We'll just kind of, we'll just play around and goof around a little bit with some of these things. And then, so just a little fun fact, the choya wood is uh, dried dead cactus plants. Uh, and so uh, this is actually something that, uh, where I typically like to go herping, uh, and now uh, I'll be a lot closer to places where this is more plentiful. When I go out herping, I'll find the dead plants um, and then this is kind of like a field collecting branch kind of thing, like it is a lot of other places. And then you treat it exactly the same, where you bake them, at, you wash them and bake them at low temperatures for long period of times, or you can do the, the bleach bath, where you submerge them in bleach water for long periods of time, and then, uh, then you add other things to kind of that, to let them, uh, let that bleach kind of come out. So you'll soak it in bleach water, and then you'll pull it off, rinse it out, and then you'll soak it in regular water to allow the bleach to come out, because otherwise that bleach can end up staying in there. Let's add a couple other little things here. So we'll just put a little rock there. Uh, maybe another little rock back here. I don't know, should we do another choya wood? Another big branch, I don't know. I really like the choya wood, but maybe I'll hold off. I don't have a whole lot of really good choya right now. Maybe I'll get some more this summer. Um, Cause a lot of the animals that I'm gonna end up moving into these cages are uh, more of the uh, arid type species. So there we go, maybe like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? I think that looks not too bad. Maybe like, maybe like that. Put another rock right here just to kind of hold that in place. That way you can bask here. They don't do a lot of full basking. Um, they do a lot of cryptid basking, although these guys, I don't know nearly as much about their regular behavior as some of the ones that are more common here because I actually get the ability to observe them. Um, but a lot of snakes, they will do cryptid basking will expose just parts of themselves. Um, and I have noticed that with quite a few other species that I allow the ability to do that with, uh, both for heat and for UVA and UVB light spectrums. So this will allow the, him to kind of poke out here. Um, and even he would do that a lot. He would very rarely be fully exposed when he wasn't looking around for food, even in his other enclosure. Because essentially I just have the same lights on, on that other enclosure. I'm just giving him more space to climb and move around. Um, so or now maybe we'll do so this just a little artificial pine thing just for a little bit of a little extra greenery something for him to interact with move this around here maybe not next to that maybe like this weight that down like so maybe like that we'll probably pull that down he's he can be quite he can be a little destructive at times just a little fake plant maybe like that and we'll take this and Kind of like that. We'll see how quickly he destroys this and moves everything around. What do you guys think? I think it's looking, looks pretty good. Um, 
like I said, he likes to climb around and do a, get into a lot of different things. What do you think? Should I do should I do another another hide? I'm not sure if we really need to or not. He has this one. He can fall up under there. So it's one, two hides. He can get back there. He can get back behind here if he so chose. Plenty of places for him to climb. He can bask there. He can come over here. Nice large water dish. Already got some gunk in there. I don't know. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. I think that should work. Let's get some water in there for him. Do, 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 do. Let's get some water. Throw a little bit of water under there. Splash it over there. A little splash over there. We'll let that kind of sink in. And then we'll pop them in. We'll take this off the top here, just an extra little branch that I had just hanging out over here. So we'll grab O'Malley. And then we're gonna shut this. And we're gonna, well, maybe not, we'll leave it open because I don't like that reflection on there. So we'll pull O'Malley out. Come here, O'Malley, come here. So here's O'Malley in that natural substrate. He's not as glossy as he could be but this one there is less sand because in the previous one, essentially I just, I would, I, I got to the point where I stopped uh, maintaining that barrier between the two substrates and he just kind of buried through and went through all that. This, because the substrate has a little bit more uh, moisture content ability and more topsoil, I think he'll retain that gloss more because this is just kind of dust from that dirt. So we'll just kind of see what he's going to do, but I think this will be, a pretty good looking enclosure. What does everybody think? I think it looks pretty good. There we go, moving around. He's just gonna check things out for a little while. And a lot of times you're never really quite sure how they're going to adjust very quickly because you know the first day or two is always just clean, is just investigating, looking around, checking stuff out. A lot of this is gonna smell like him uh, because you know the choya wood all came from there. Um, the hides, a lot of the rocks, the fake plants came from them. Um, and then the substrate is new substrate, uh, and then, I mean, we do our best to wash it. Sometimes they still end up smelling like remaining pheromones and things that are left on, uh, from previous reptiles, but I tried to wash this out as well as I could. So hopefully it'll smell some familiar stuff, some new stuff, and just because it's a change, he will just be spending a lot of time checking this out. But there you go. Um, this is our Mexican Black King Snake, uh, I guess you could say 2022 edition for a setup, uh, I don't know, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, one of these days, uh, actually just, I'm hoping to go get a bunch of nice, really cool like pieces of flat slate and concrete that I will eventually, and then this will be another rebuild that I do later, maybe this year or next year, I will start to have more of ability to utilize even more of this space where I can make nice like piles and places for them to be able to, I can create crevices where some will stick out in between where you can get up and crawl in between and have more of those natural behaviors and I can utilize more of this. Cause this is still, while yes, there's plenty of places for him to climb and move around. There is still a lot of unutilized space here that I get a lot as a criticism, but I mean, we're working on that as a whole and it's a valid criticism for sure that eventually I will have, you know, maybe a small little rock pile here or more branches and, and detritus over here. And then over here on the warm side where the ultraviolet light, where the sun would be, I'll create a more, of a, you know, the rock pile, maybe still utilize a small hide or something uh, at the base of it, but make something to where it'll actually fill out and he can utilize even more of this area because in all honesty, this is unused space. Uh, but you know, plans for the future. This is what we got going right now uh, cause I'm going to be uh, moving a few of uh, some old enclosures and things for other projects, uh, maybe even some trades and stuff that uh, some people might be a little privy to uh, in the near future in the in the coming months but just upgrading him because he need to go in here too and so i wanted to make just a quick little video about this you know not everything's perfect not everybody does it the same so that you can see and let's see if i can adjust this really quick you can see him there we go because now i'm done building it you can just kind of as we squeeze down there he's starting to burrow down he's just he's just nosing around smelling stuff seeing what's going on but that's the kind of behavior that you would see a lot um, that, you know, a lot of people will keep colubrids on aspen, which allows them to do this. 
but I like the more naturalistic most of the time. And even in the racks, a lot of them are uh, similar different types of uh, substrate uh, concoctions. And there's commercial stuff too, like uh, there's a pre the Permian Exotics that I met that are really cool. Uh, Josh's Frogs, Bio Dude, um, they all do a very good job of making a bunch of really nice different substrates for uh, ranging in species. But just a little idea, one thing you can do, um, you know, with a lot of snakes, there's the idea that, you know, they, they like small cramped spaces, but if you give them room and plenty of places to explore, they will absolutely utilize it, whether you necessarily see it or not, as I have, so I kick the camera, as I have now seen with other animals, and this, including snakes, as we cruise along, um, and I'm noticing that behavior too. They are active during all different parts of the day when in captivity, uh, not necessarily like they would be in the wild, although knowing their individual species, that all makes sense too. So give them the space, they will use it. You just have to build it out correctly. And so I think this is a good step up from what he was at, gives him more space. And then the future, as I said before, I want to be able to start making use of more of this space, similar to, um, actually, we're going to look over at his neighbors, the fat tail geckos, where I kind of built that out. And even then, there's a lot of uh, empty space and got that little poop there that I get to clean after this. So yeah, poop happens, guys. I'm just not going to deny that. But yeah, his neighbors over here will shut that for him. You can kind of see that a little bit better, where I built that out and gave more platforms and places for them to crawl onto, which they do utilize for African fat tail geckos, but mostly at night. Um, but anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let's see, we'll open this back up and we'll kind of get in on O'Malley as we close this up. Hopefully again, you guys did enjoy this video. Um, I always love making this sort of content. I know that the enclosures and things will usually get me a fair bit of hate as things go along just because people don't like how the, necessarily I do things here and there, but I enjoy it because it's just ideas. That's all what I like to do. It's, as I said before, there's no one way, there's no best way, but there are ways that you can do things that are for the benefit of your animals. And so that's what I'm doing with these things right here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe it gave you an idea for things in the future, either with stuff that I'm talking about for plans for the future or in this actual video. Um, questions, comments, concerns, please put it down in the comments below. You can check out all my social media and Jay-Z's reptiles everywhere. Um, we have a Patreon, we have the Instagram, we have the Facebook. Uh, I'm really terrible at updating TikTok, but we're on there too. Hope everyone's having a great day. Stay tuned for more reptile content in the future. Hope you're having a great day, and we will check you next time.